Hi folks, it's David Kearns here again with another With a Sharpie video. Um, I'm going to be starting a new series of videos over the next little while, um, which I'm going to call the Clean Tech series. Um, this is where I'm going to be talking about uh, some of the technologies that we're using uh, to enhance the sustainability of our energy supply and of our industrial base. Uh, today's first video is going to talk about something that we all see every day, uh, that's solar photovoltaic panels or solar PV panels. Hopefully by the end of this short video you'll have a better appreciation for how it works. So enjoy. So how do solar cells work? Well to start off with we use a material known as silicon is the main material used in solar cells. Silicon has a special property in that each silicon atom, which I'm representing by the symbol SI, wants to form bonds with its electrons with four neighbours. And I've drawn this in two dimensions, so I've drawn the four points of the compass. In reality it's in three dimensions, but you get the idea. And what that means is that I can have lots of silicon atoms and they all get joined together in a nice crystalline lattice. And so every one of them, and I won't draw infinite numbers of them, you get the idea. Basically there's silicon atoms in all directions. That's a basic silicon crystal. And you say, well okay, so what? Well, a basic silicon crystal on its own doesn't do very much. It's not very useful. And so what we need to do is we need to start adding uh, extra atoms. And this is a process known as doping. And so let me give you an example of adding an element called phosphorus. So phosphorus we represent with, I'll draw a significantly different color here. Uh, phosphorus is drawn with a P. Now phosphorus has the property that instead of making four bonds with its neighbors, with its electrons, it actually wants to make five. And so let me put this in here alongside all of its neighbors. And so it's sharing electrons with its neighbors. Here they are. But it wants to form five bonds. And so what we have here is we have an extra bond which doesn't really have anyone to connect with. There's, it's surrounded by this lattice of silicon. And what that means is that although there's an electron here that's sort of bound up with this positive uh, phosphorus um, nucleus, um, the trouble that it has is that it, it basically has no one to connect with. And so by adding a little bit of energy to this system, maybe in the form of sunlight or providing an electrical um, field to it or something like that, um, these electrons can move around. Um, so the effect of this is that this now has an excess of electrons and this thing wants to be a little bit negative. So I'll draw a big N here. Now let's say over on this side we have the same lattice of silicon atoms. Okay, and we'll draw them in here just like we had before. And you get the idea, they go off in all directions. But this time we could add a different element to it. And this time we're going to add an element called boron. So boron is represented with the letter B. Now boron has the property that it only wants to form three bonds with its neighbors. So over here phosphorus wanted to form five, so we had an excess. Over here, we've, we don't have enough. We don't have enough bonds. We've basically got a, a hole and I'll draw that as a little circle. But effectively, um, a hole is kind of a, a mental construct that we've developed to represent this. What that means is that this side of um, our crystalline network, it's got a gap where it would like to have an electron if we could give it one. And so it's one electron short effectively and that means that this whole thing wants to be a little bit positive because these nucleuses here are positively charged. They're not quite balanced and so this one is positively charged. Now if we put these together, if we get a positive and an, a negative part and we join them together, and I'll just draw a bit of a, a line here where I've popped them together. Um, this is known typically as a PN junction. In this case I've drawn it as NP, but you get the idea, NP. Now the effect of that is that electrons basically only want to flow in one direction in this system. They don't want to stay where they were. I've got the ability for electrons to move around and these electron holes to move around. Um, when I put them together, the electrons only want to flow in one direction, not the band. Okay, and so the effect of that one direction is it, you've created here something known as a diode. And now a diode is an electronic component which only lets things flow in one direction. So that's all interesting. What's that got to do with solar cells? Well, let's say we now go to the process of starting to shine some light on this system. And I'll draw it in orange just to make it a little bit easier to see. So we've now got some light coming from the sun. 
uh, shining light down on this system. Might be a little bit hard to see with that color. Let's try a darker. Here's some light coming in. Now, what happens with the sun's rays is that the sun's rays are made up of little packets of energy called photons. And photons are just discrete little lumps of, of uh, energy in the light. And what happens is that um, some of them will pass right through this lattice of silicon and will uh, pass right through it and nothing happens. Some of them will be reflected away, so they'll bounce off like a mirror. But occasionally, some of these photons will actually be absorbed by one of the atoms. And what that does is it actually provides energy to knock one of these electrons loose. Now, because we've set up this PN junction so that things only flow in one direction, we can now make electrons move from one side to the other. And because we've done that, um, that actually enables um, an electric current to start flowing as a direct result of being struck by the sun. And so when we arrange it in this way, with the sun being able to get onto it, that's something known as a photodiode. And so now that we've got a photodiode, our electrons can only move in one direction. Um, what that means is that we can use the sun to actually produce um, an electric current. Um, now that electric current that gets produced is known as a direct current, which means that the electricity always flows in one direction all the time. Um, we call that DC. Um, if you want to use it in your home, the electricity that comes out of the power outlets in your home is known as alternating current, where the, the, uh, the voltage actually goes up and down um, 50 times a second in Australia or 60 times a second in the United States. Alternating current, you've probably heard that called AC. And so what we need is something known as an inverter. So an inverter is a piece of electronics which can actually take a DC source of electricity and convert it to AC. Once we've got an inverter, we can then start to feed this source of electricity that we've made uh, into our home. And so you can see here, this um, NP or PN junction um, process is actually used extensively throughout electronics. So it's the basis of transistors, uh, which are also the basis of, of making computer chips amongst other things. Um, but in this case, um, we're finding that they're being used extensively. Now this is a very, 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 very basic overview of how they work. Um, but essentially the idea is that uh, by a little bit of adding a little bit of doping, a little bit of impurity to our silicon, we've made it possible to actually extract the energy from these photons. This has been David Kearns with another With the Sharpie video. I uh, hope this was interesting and informative for you. So have a good day.